Okay, welcome. I am going to show you how to create an object in literal notation. By now, hopefully, you know that an object is simply something that has a bunch of properties. In this example, now well, this is pretty elaborate. I have this big fat programmer uh, object. Here I have, I'll have to declare it. It's a variable, it starts as a variable, right? And it starts as a variable, but now it becomes something more, something greater. It becomes, it's like, a, it's almost a function, right? So now what I've done is I've made it a function. If I go over here and I look at this, you notice how it has this little like brackets with a, with a block? Isn't that kind of telling me, hey, it's an object. Look at that. Look at that. So now I have, first of all, it's a module. So this is a new thing in JavaScript that isn't in our book yet. Um, and it's developing in JavaScript. So it's something that you should probably study on your own uh, because we won't be able to get to it. But here's this uh, module programmer and it's an object. Uh, remember we can hover over stuff in JavaScript or in VS code and it tells us what the heck is going on. Okay, so we've got this object programmer. Well, I only have one program programmer, apparently. Um, so let's see. Name is John Doe. Okay, now obviously I'm making a string. Look at this property name. So it's telling me what the property is. It's the name. And I do not close this okay look at that when i try to close this with a semicolon it's like no 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 you're the comma is expected so that's pretty cool so it's a comma because it's kind of like guys <clears throat> this is like building an array okay but it's in a function form so it's using curly braces rather than brackets but it still acts like an array it's very similar so we'll just keep Keep working to find that out. All right, so I have date of hire, right? That's something I wanna know about my programmer. I wanna remember. Here we are introduced to built-in objects. And when we are creating an object, we're actually going to use the keyword new. And so often we'll say new object in constructor notation. Um, but here, the object is going to work as um, the object of a method later on. So right now we're saying, okay, date of hire. But remember, the ultimate like output that we're going to perform, and I don't think I mentioned this before, the output that we're going to have is how many years has this programmer been with us? So the date of hire is really important, right? We're going to have to have the difference between the date uh, today's date and the date of hire. So I add the object, but there's only one value in that object, and that is the string, uh, the date string. And I could put it in January 1, comma, 2008. And it doesn't really matter what the time was, unless we want to get like, you do have to have a time, comma, all right, so one of the things I care about is if he has a master's degree. If he has a master's degree, his payroll changes, right? Like, he went to school, so he makes more money. And hopefully, I'm a great boss, and I make sure he makes more money. Okay, so here, okay, master's degree. It's a yes or no question. You either have a master's degree or you don't. So what does that mean? What's the data type? Boolean. I really like that word, guys. So true. I'm going to say, yeah, it's true. Oops, I did it again. I love VS Code because it's like telling me, oh, you did it again. Um, I like CodePen because it's really easy to just like throw your code in there. But I highly suggest that you start your code in VS Code so that it looks better and works better for you um, or it teaches you. So now what's my, what's my type here? Boolean, it even says that in VS Code. Thank you, VS Code, for teaching us as we go. All right, so we have master's degree, true, so it's a Boolean value. All right, and then we have some other strings. I'm gonna move past those strings. 
Let's see. How about grad year? Grad year. That makes sense. Like, when did he graduate? Um, 1998. That's nice. Okay. And why is that something? Oh, I keep doing it. Um, you know what's nice is like I, you know, I keep doing this, but it's like, well, it's just like, it's just like a word processor, right? When you misspell something, it underlines in red. You're like, oh, I gotta go fix it. Okay. Um, yeah, so grad year, I want to know that. It's a number, right? If I hover over, it says number. Yay. The next one, which is important for a programmer, you got to know, well, what programming languages does this person have, right? Does John have? And this is where the data type can become an array. So program lang langu. Uh, yeah, sometimes I have to use phonics <laughs> for, uh, for typing. Yeah. Okay, um, because you never want to, the thing is, you never want to um, misspell something because you'll do it again. Or like maybe one time you misspell it and then one time you, you do spell it right and then it's like really confusing in your code and you're like, why is there this error? And then eventually you finally realize that it's a spelling error. Anyways, okay, that could happen at some point. All right, so here I'm actually constructing an array, which is another object. So there's an object within an object. And uh, let's say John knows JavaScript, PHP. Oops. Yeah, gotta do that. Okay, he knows uh, PHP. They know, oops. Goodness, see, I love you. I love UVS code because you're pointing out my mistakes. Um, Python. Wow, this person's obviously a web developer, right? HTML and CSS. All right, great. So obviously a programmer, probably an app developer because it's Python, which is great. Um, Technically, you could really work as a developer with JavaScript, PHP, HTML, and CSS, but Python is ever increasingly becoming super popular. Okay, so I have this array. Okay, great. That's an array, and let's take a look at it. Look at that. It's a string, and it has this little bracket that's indicating it's an array. It's a string array. Okay, how about this? Years with company. Well, is the years with company always going to be the same? No, it's going to be different based on whenever I am completing this, right? Um, so whenever I want to call up, well, how long has he been with years with the company? I will, you know, it'll change. So um, it's not just a number. So this is where we have to come up with a function, right? We want to know. Um, we want to use this date of hire, right, to find out what's the difference between today's year and that year. So we have we have another object um, method uh, for dates, and that's like today. So let me show you how this works. So first of all, now the property is a function. Okay, so we're going to make a function. And we'll to open this up. And then we'll give ourselves some curly braces. Okay. And now we're going to build it. So I have a date of hire up here, but this up here, oh, it's not actually, it hasn't done anything yet because this is not a variable. This is a property. Okay. So we actually have to make it a variable. All right. So let's make it wait date of hire equal now i'm going to pull the value I'm using dot notation and this keyword this keyword this this dot date of hire look at that it says it's a property date boom oops okay so there we go. It has this date of hire. 
this could be a constant here, just so you know. Um, this is always going to be the same. Okay. So, and then I can reuse uh, the property. I can reuse the name of the property as the variable, which makes sense, right? I don't, I don't want, why would I not use it again? Um, there's no reason because it's, uh, this is a local variable. It's not messing with anything else. This is not a variable. It's a property. It's different. Uh, so sometimes you might read, oh, a property is just a variable. It's not. It's a property. It's different. Okay, moving on. All right, next. So, okay, so now I know within my function, it's data higher. The whole point is that I'm going to eventually figure out return, you know, today's year minus the higher year. Look, look at what happens when I hover over it. You know what this is? Can you guess? Because it has these different properties, right? It has property value, property value, property value, property value, right? And all it's doing right now is telling me what kind of value is in that property. So this is the object. And so we're using um, this as the object. So now that's really, you know, what we'll do a lot. It'll be object method, right? Now this is a property, which is a method. Okay. Um, so yeah, Whew. I know it's a lot guys. All right, but moving on. Let's see. So uh, the data fire is never going to change. I'm going to use it as a constant. Now, how about, here's the thing. I don't have the year. Remember the date is the entire date. So there's another method that I can use. And actually I'm going to make this a constant too. Uh, constant hire year. That's never going to change when, when I hire him. Hire year equals now I'm going to do it again. I'm now I'm using an object method again. Now my object is date of hire. Oops, there we go. And I'm pressing tab by the way, when it tells me like, is this what you want to do? Yes. tab. Um, so I'm using, I'm calling that and that's my object. Okay. I know it's my object, right? And then it's date. And I'm saying, okay, well, I need to get something from it. And the function, the method that I'm going to use is get full year. Oh, look at that. Look at this, guys. Look at how it tells me. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Let's say I did want to build in something a little more specific. I would actually use an if else statement. And we're going to get there in another concept we're just trying to take this really slow at first and get to that place of like okay we really need to use an if statement in order for us to go further which we will okay so now we have get full year well get full year is different so go back up here to date of hire okay date of hire was a whole date and it is an object. The parameter, the argument is the whole date, okay? Now, when I go down here and I'm looking at this date of hire, it's the whole date again. So now if I say get full year, the method is a built-in method. So it goes after the object and it's an object dot method. And it gets parentheses because remember a method is also a function. It just doesn't have any arguments in this case. What else do we need to know? Okay, so now I need to know, I wanna say, all right, the from here, from today, subtract it from the date, that's how long they're gonna be, you know, that's how long they're with the company, right? Cause that's what I'm doing here. Still, I'm still building it, it's long, I know. Um, or I'm just talking a lot. So now I need to know what today is, right? What's today? So I say let today equal new date. And now when I leave it blank, guess what? It's just today. We use the new keyword with the object date 
to basically say, this is an operator. So remember an operator is something that does something to something. Okay. So, um, an operator when it comes to, you know, the operator uh, plus is adding things together or concatenating right. strings. So new in this case, um, it's a keyword, but specifically it's an operator in which we use to create an object since the object hasn't been created outside. Um, but it's a built in object. We still have to create it with new. Now let's see, um, let's pause for a second. I have code pen open in the other half of my screen and it has the browser console that I can use. Let's go ahead and open that up and get this statement, this expression over here today equals new date. Let's make sure that this actually works. I am writing a ton of code right now. I might feel a little paranoid that if this doesn't work at the end, I'm going to be pretty sad. So I'm going to test this object and I'm going to see if it actually returns today's date. The way I'm going to do that is by going into my console. I already have code pen open. Here's this awesome console. I copy that over there, paste it, and then I call it today and boom, it tells me it's an object and today's date. Yay, it works. Highly recommend you do this. So if you're not sure about something, go ahead, put it in the browser console. All right, so we have today, new date. Now we gotta get the same, get the full year. I'm gonna take this, come and see. I'm just gonna copy paste real quick. Um, I'm not making it a constant let, really, I can just make it year, oh, seriously. And instead of date of hire, what's my object? It's today. All right, and then get full year again. Yes, all right. And then watch this, I just wanna show you. Okay, I can do this, um, and I can put it in the console. All right, and then shift to enter. Uh, now, what is year? Oh, wait, oh shoot, I don't have let in there. Uh, let's see, so it's like, what are you talking about? Okay, let. Shift to enter now. What is year? Yeah. Boom, 2023. Awesome. So again, I'm testing it as I go and I see, oh, okay, it works. I'm good. All right, good. And so now I finally have two years. I got this year and I got this year. So now I can take the difference between them. So let's do now. Remember that this is all a function and I have to have some way to call out or, or like to get the value out of the function because it's kind of like stuck here in this block of code. And the reason for that is because there's no arguments. It's an empty argument function. So we have to have a way to return the value. Um, I could have made a new variable that was going to say the year today minus the higher year, but that's a whole extra line of code. I can do it all at one time. I can make the expression return year minus higher year. Okay, there we go, it's returned. So let's see what VS Code thinks. Boom, VS Code is like, it's gonna be a number. That is so true, it is a number. And they know, they know that it's a number. And that in itself tells me that I'm doing something right. I can output this. Um, well, first of all, look, I've got this function. This function, remember, it was a property, a uh, uh, property. It's still a property. It hasn't changed, but now the function has created it into a number. That's why there's those parentheses. Uh, this little equal sign with a, with a arrow, it's called arrow notation. And we'll definitely need to look at that a little bit. It's not used in old school JavaScript, which is this book was written with, I, it was only written two years ago, this book, but a lot has changed. I don't know, maybe people during COVID, they got really bored, so they like started writing new JavaScript. <laughs> I don't really know, but there's this whole E6 standards and arrow notation, and that's where let has come and taken over var. 
all this stuff. Anyways, okay, TMI for now. Okay, so we got the closing of the of the object. I'm gonna get rid of some of these lines. And we got the closing of the function. We're good. Okay, so how do we call this? Well, first of all, in VS Code, I'm gonna um, go full screen here. In VS Code, I want to do everything in uh, my HTML. So when I first make an HTML document, I have the template, the HTML5 template, but I'm missing one thing, and that is the actual script. So remember that I have my script located just above the closing body tag. So in my script, I'm going to say literal object.js. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna stay with this again. Now, if we were doing real websites, I want you to have it in a separate folder and everything like that. But when you're just testing and doing things like this, you just need two files. Okay. The only reason why I have the HTML file is so that I can test it easier with um, the edge tools. Right click on this, open browser with dev tools. Takes a little minute. All right, cool. Here's my console. Here's my HTML page. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go back to my literal object, close this, move this, make this bigger. Okay, so in order to actually get this output, I'm going to do document.write. Um, I don't feel like messing with the, uh, with the HTML. But I do want to make this easier. So one of the things that we like to do, if, if you've noticed, is kind of um, make everything very vertical rather than horizontal. Like, yeah, the actual values of things, we let go far horizontal. Like, it doesn't matter all of the values of this array. What's really important is that I can see this program languages, um, the years with company. So you just notice that a lot of it is very vertical um so we don't have to to go across uh the point i'm getting to is keep you know keep the code short and sweet on each line so i'm actually going to first call the programmer um the property gears with company property so the way i can do that i can um, constructor dot notation um, first though i'm gonna say let uh and i'm gonna do years uh, with company. Okay. Um, or no, I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually I can years with company. Okay. I can reuse this because remember this was a property. Um, so the years with company is not a variable. Therefore I can use it again as a variable, which is fantastic. So let years with company equal, and now I'm going to call my object. So I call my object, which is programmer. So this is a method, right? Uh, so programmer and then my function, right? Is actually that years with company. So let's check that out. Programmer years with company. And I gotta put this at the end. Okay, because it's a function, I have to make sure that I have these uh, input. All right, so now I have this, let's go. Okay, so in the document.write, instead of having um, all of this inside of that, now I just have, I can put years with company. And cross my fingers that this works because, you know, I'm gonna go over here, refresh, <gasps> yay, 15, it is 15. Because they started in 2008 and today is 2023 when I am recording this. My son is turning 15 this year as well and he was born in 2008. So yes, that is correct. Now that we have this huge object programmer, which makes a ton of sense. Obviously, someone that works at a company is going to have a whole bunch of characteristics, properties with values. Coming up, we are going to figure out how to turn this programmer thing rather than its own little variable. We're going to turn this into a function 
And then we're going to be able to build individual objects using the object function. So uh, let's check that out because obviously if I have one programmer, I probably will have more if not now, but soon. And so I'm going to need a way to make sure I can add all my programmers with this exact same information. Kind of like building a database here, right? 